So when applying Pascal's triangle, a couple things that we want to recognize um, with this to expand this binomial. The first thing is we got to recognize the patterns. And the first pattern we talked about with Ashley was noticing that we have ascending and descending terms. So we have two expressions. Now it also might be helpful to think of this as negative x plus a negative 1. Okay, Because if you're not using your parentheses correctly, there's going to be mistakes that are made. And I'll show you. Yes? Um, you could represent it as, as an equal sign, but this isn't really part of the problem that I'm doing. I'm just saying it could represent equaling to this. But uh, yes, I get your point. Thank you. Um, but no, this isn't what I was. But yes, you, I mean, definitely you could say yes. I actually decided to write it over here. But yes, negative x plus negative 1 raised to 6, right? You could think about it that way. And mathematically, that would be the same. Why do I keep on losing my black marker? There she is. All right. So. I would have you think about this, especially when you're dealing with negatives. This is, import is especially important. The next thing is, if you guys remember, the pattern that we looked up over there is the first term is always raised to the same power, right? If it was to the expansion to the fourth, you can see the first term starts at the fourth, right? So I'll start this with negative x to the sixth power. You guys agree? That'd be it. And then, the second, and then the second term starts at to the 0. So that's going to be negative 1 to the 0 power. And I'm basically kind of following along here. Now, I'm not going to get to the coefficients just yet. I'll come back to that um, at the end. Then I'm basically just going to add each and every term. So now I'm just going to go in descending order. So negative x to the fifth, negative 1 to the first, plus negative x to the fourth, negative 1 squared, plus negative x cubed times negative 1 cubed plus negative x squared times negative 1 to the fourth plus negative x to the first times negative 1 to the fifth plus negative x to the 0 times negative 1 to the sixth. Does everybody see how, though, I applied the pattern in ascending descending order, just like we, knew, we already knew the pattern? But just kind of a following that pattern of the first and last term. One term has descending powers. The other term has ascending powers. Does everybody see and agree? OK. The next thing, and this is to the sixth power. So therefore, we need to make sure we use the sixth row of Pascal's triangle. So we're either going to have to recreate Pascal's triangle, or once we get up to this row, we can figure out that the next row is going to be 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. So what I need to do then is each one of these terms, just like over there, each one of these terms needs to be multiplied by that value. So this would be a 1 times 1 times 6. I'll put them in parentheses so we remember their multiplication. Uh, times 15 times 20 times 15 times 6, and then times 1. <clears throat> so what I did is I took those values from Pascal's triangle, and I multiplied each term. So there's two relationships, right? What Ashley and Nick looked at. First relationship is the powers. First term is descending. Second term is ascending. The third relationship, second relationship is you're multiplying each term by the coefficients based on Pascal's triangle, because we know those coefficients would happen. So now, let's just go and simplify this. Anything raised to the 0 is uh, 1. Negative x raised to the 6th power is going to be a positive x to the 6th power. Um, let's see. This is going to be uh, negative x raised to the 5th power. Anything negative raised to an odd power, guys, is, uh, is negative. Anything negative raised to an even power is positive. So therefore, it's a negative times a negative, which is a positive. So it's plus. 6x to the fifth. Over here, we're going to have a positive, and that's going to be positive. So that's positive 1. So that's going to be a plus 15x to the fourth power. This turns into a negative. That's a negative 1. Negative 1 times a negative is a positive. So plus 20x cubed. That's positive. That turns positive. So plus 15x squared. That's a negative. That's a negative 1. Negative 1 times negative is a positive 
root 6x, and then that goes to 1, and negative 1 to the 6 power is plus 1, and that's times 1, so plus 1. Whew. So that is what the binomial expansion would be. So if you were to multiply that out with all those binomials, that's exactly your result. Now, was this really that much more efficient? I mean, it was much more efficient. It was still quite a bit of work, though, wasn't it? Right? So 